This presentation, I will show you how to make an APA style correlation table um, using Excel. So you can make the table in Excel and then just import it into a Word document. Um, you cannot copy paste SPSS tables into your reports or into your dissertations. Um, there are quite good resources uh, on the APA website about the details of the table. So it explains to you how the table should be set up and give you sample tables so you can have a look at it. Um, it also uh, explains to you what the table should contain and in what format it should be. Uh, and it gives you an example of a table with uh, um, little bubbles explaining what each part uh, uh, should be and should contain. Um, they explain principles and fonts, uh, table borders, long or wide tables, placement of tables in the paper. So there are plenty of information. Um, but in this video, we'll have a look on how to make a correlation table uh, from SPSS output uh, into a table um, that is in APA format. So we have our correlation. So we have um, descriptive statistics table and uh, we have a correlation table uh, that give us the correlation between uh, uh, seven variables. Uh, TG Global is trait emotional intelligence, we have age, and then we have five personality traits from the participants. And the idea of this table is to look at the relationship between uh, uh, emotional intelligence uh, and how it correlates with uh, all the five personality traits as well as age. So to make table, um, it's easier to copy this table into Excel spreadsheet and delete things we don't need. So, if we copy this table to the Excel spreadsheet, um, this is how table will look like. So, um, we have our first variables uh, on the vertical line and the same variables on the horizontal line, and we read the table in relation to this ones. Yeah, so you either read from the bottom of the table or from the top of the table. I personally prefer to read it from the bottom side of the table, so from this triangle. Um, so let's start formatting it. Uh, it's easier not to have the variable names uh, on vertical axis as well as horizontal axis. It's easier to give a number uh, to the variables and let's say rename this one to a more informative one um, uh, age uh, we can give it as number two and start it with the capital um, these uh, variables can be uh, renamed or kept in the same way I will rename them later in the word document uh, because I cannot spell correctly everything so um, five, uh, one, two, three, four, ah, uh, five, six, and seven. So then what we can do in here is uh, um, just to name them as one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So now we have the variable set up and let's add the name to it that it's a variable. So variable in here and variable in there. Uh, we don't need this information because it is quite redundant so we can simply delete this column. Uh, and now we're going to start deleting all the redundant information. So, for example, information emotional intelligence on emotional intelligence is redundant. We don't need it. We'll just clear content for now. Uh, this part of the table is the same as the bottom part of the table, and uh, uh, we don't need that information either. Clear content. Uh, we don't need this information. I'm trying always to clear as much as possible in one go. Um, but everything above one, including one, should go. Uh, clear content. 
then we can just delete the remaining. So you see, this one became redundant, so we don't need it. Um, these values are redundant. Uh, redundant, redundant, redundant. Okay, so now our table looks like we only kept the bottom of the table. Now we need to remove uh, the remaining redundant information. So these ones are, we don't need them anymore. Age. So uh, in this table, so we have the correlation coefficient, its exact significance level and number of participants. Number of participants are the same everywhere, so it's easier for us to actually, in the notation, to add that n equaled 77. In that case, we don't need to repeat this information all the time. The significance level is denoted by stars, so uh, two stars correspond to p less than 0 0.01 uh, and it's a two-tailed test and we can add in here that one star is p corresponding to 0 0.05 level. Let's give it some pretty spaces. Um, N is this one and we also um, EI is not very clear what it is so we can say EI is uh, emotional intelligence. Okay so then this row becomes also redundant. We delete this one. So let's delete all the redundant rows and only keep what we need. Okay, so the table now starting to look much prettier. Uh, what uh, happens with APA style tables, it should contain as much information as possible and still be clear. Uh, there are two tables we have in the output that are important, the correlation table and also descriptive statistics table. So we can incorporate descriptive statistics into our correlation table. So let's copy it into our Excel. Um, and uh, the variables are ordered in exactly the same way, so let's make space in the beginning. Insert, insert, and we can call them mean and standard deviation. Uh, all of this row um, is our variables, and now we'll just copy the values we're interested in. Um, these values need to be kept to one decimal place, uh, so we can customize the number of decimals we want to be present and there we go. Uh, looks already much prettier. Um, now the other aspects that we um, should format in there or can format in there in here and then the rest of it can be done in um, a Word document. Um, so we'll give it the bottom border and a top border to the first row of the table and we need to give a bottom border to the last uh, uh, numerical content of the table and this one will be in a footnote. It wouldn't have a bottom border but it needs space to look pretty. So if we select it we can merge um, these uh, columns. So table looks already quite presentable. So we copy it and we place it into the Word document. Now, the table doesn't fit prettily. So what you can do is go to Table Layout and you will have an outer fit option and we want to fit it to the window. Now we fit it in a window and it all looks pretty. Um, but the alignment is kind of a bit all over the place, so we can realign uh, the things and usually realigning it to center 
um, makes it look much neater. So um, let's realign it to center. Okay, that is uh, much prettier. Um, and this is uh, our correlation table. The last few things we need to do is to give variables a meaningful name. So n is neuroticism. Um, e is extraversion. Uh, uh, o is openness. Yeah, I knew there was a second S. A is uh, agreeableness. No. That's why I always edit words uh, in a Word document. And, uh, um, gosh, what are we missing? Conscientiousness. What con oh, always gives me pain. Con is it better? Um, okay, okay, I think this is the correct um, way. Um, so this is uh, a quite nice APA style table. So now what it needs is a name, table one. And the name is, uh, we'll say, uh, descriptive descriptive statistics and correlation patients with study variables. So each word meaning, I don't know, um, each uh, noun should be uh, starting with the capital letter. And let's see if uh, our table resembles the table in here. So we know the title needs to be in italic. Um, so let's make it italic. And bring the table slightly up. Can we do that? No, it doesn't move up. Okay, but this is still all right. <clears throat> if you have space and your table is not that big, you may want to space it out so it doesn't look too uh, clustered. Okay, uh, and... Uh, Let's check how the footnote should look in the APA style table. So we have a note. Um, yeah, it's okay. We don't need to do any other formatting to it. And uh, um, that is it. Uh, enjoy making your uh, APA style tables.